Hey, it's Tay with Mom on the Spectrum. I am a 32-year-old mom who was diagnosed with autism level one last year at age 31. I have two kids, they're five and eight. And today I'm here to share with you a couple of helpful things that will help you navigate your life after an adult autism diagnosis. First of all, I've got my thinking putty here. I always love having some sort of fidget toy with me or a way to stem. Stemming is something that we do physically to help manage the anxiety that we deal with because of our heightened sensory perception. So today I just wanted to share a couple of things that might be helpful to you. Maybe you just got an autism diagnosis and you're kind of like, where do I go from here? I totally understand that feeling. Just a year ago, I realized that I was on the spectrum after a professional diagnosis and I was like, who am I? I'm still the same person, but I, had this whole new grid for understanding who I was and I didn't even know what to do with all of the information that I had and all of the information that I wish I had. So we're gonna keep it really simple today. The first thing to understand is that you are okay just as you are. You don't need to change yourself. Second thing, you don't have to share your diagnosis with anybody that you don't wanna share it with. In fact, I would recommend that you wait a little while, sit on it, get comfortable with it yourself, which could take a long time, and only share it with people who you trust and who create space for you to be yourself. I would hesitate sharing your diagnosis with anybody who will make you feel less than or add pressure to your life to change in any way. That's not what you need. On a practical level, it's important to understand that you need time alone. Time alone is how we recharge. It's how we make sense of the world because we can shut down some of the streams of information that are coming to us that we're processing whenever other people are talking to us. So being by yourself, it helps slow down our cognitive processing and gives us a chance to make sense of our day. Make sure that you're making regular time to be by yourself. That could look different for everybody. It might actually be that you're not totally by yourself. You're with your cat or you're being quiet, sitting next to someone who makes you feel safe. Also, make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of ways to stem. If that word is new to you, you've probably been stemming all of your life. Stemming is just a way to physically get rid of energy that's in your body. Stemming can be grinding your teeth, it can be clapping your hands, making noise, moving your body, dancing, any way that you get energy out. It's important that you make time to regularly stem because again, it helps us process all of the information that we're bringing in through our senses, which tends to be heightened for people on the spectrum. So. Lights might be brighter, sounds might be louder, taste might be more upsetting if something's too strong or spicy or sweet. So just be mindful that the way that you experience the world is gonna be different than other people and it doesn't always have to make sense. But when you stem, it can help relieve some of the anxiety. I also have some other videos on some of my favorite sensory regulation products. Whenever things do start to become too loud or too strong or too bright, it's important that you stem or regulate your senses through things that calm your nervous system down. So you can check out one of my videos for more information about that. I'll put the links to those videos in the description. Another thing to keep in mind, special interests are very important to people on the spectrum. If you're on the spectrum, you want to make sure that you're making time for the things that give you life. So for me, I have autism and ADHD, which makes special interests kind of complicated because I have several different special interests that I cycle through all the time. It's a little bit exhausting. For example, I love spending time playing the piano. I love crocheting. I love video editing. All of these things I could do for hours zone out like I'm in a black hole and not come up for air until hours later. So whatever you like to do and get lost in, make sure that you're making time for yourself to do those things. And then another big one that takes some practice is getting used to setting boundaries. So as a person on the spectrum, what you can tolerate and what you want to do in terms of social situations is going to look a lot different than your neighbor. Setting boundaries, saying that you don't want to participate in certain social activities is okay. I have another video on boundary setting that might be really helpful for you as you start navigating your new diagnosis. But the most important thing is to remember that it's okay to say no and it's okay to give yourself room to be totally different than the people around you. So many other things I want to share with you, but for now I think this is plenty to keep you busy. Know that you do not have to figure all of this out right now. Just take everything one teeny tiny baby step at a time. Give yourself lots of grace. Rest as much as you can. Rest is extremely important for us. And let me know if you have any ideas for future videos. I'd love to hear them. This is a great community. There's a lot of support here for things that you might be going through. And you can also find my email address under the description tab on my channel. I'm always happy to hear from you there as well. Good luck on this new adventure of having your autism diagnosis. Although there's plenty of challenges involved with being on the spectrum, there's also a lot of really cool gifts as well. And I hope that together on this channel and in the comments, we can work towards understanding those gifts better and using them in a way that brings us and the people around us joy and meaning in life. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye!